Greetings and welcome to Tax Tip Tuesday. Today's topic is rental income. First, I want to start out by differentiating between business and rental income because there's a fine line in between them. So the landlord and the rental income will provide base services such as heating, electricity, and parking. Business usually provide more services on top of that, such as meals, 24-hour security, indoor entertainment. An example would be a resort. Resort will fall under business as opposed to rental income. And also, if you sold your property in 2016 and you designated a principal residence sum but not all your own, refer to the video in the annotation up above or also link it down in the description below. Just keep this one point in mind. If you offer more services, the more likely there is to be a business as opposed to rental income. And you can never go wrong. Now for a demo in our very own Taxtron software. And Jill own a property, a rental property on 100 memory lane. They own it 50% each and they have rental income of about $15,000 from tenants as well as some expenses to maintain the property. Now the form of interest we're going to be looking in this video is the T776 Statement of Real Estate Rentals. We're going to enter some applicable information here. Now the first thing we're going to do is split the statement with Jack and Jill. To enter the spouse portion, we're going to check mark the box here, and we're going to manually adjust Jack's portion to 50%. Now remember, they're splitting at 50-50. We're going to enter some very basic personal information. So remember the property was 100 memory lane. Number of units, go 100 units, gross rent of $15,000, city, we'll go Toronto, province of Ontario. Go, and postal code N1, 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 N1. Okay, we've entered all the applicable information. Now before we go ahead and record any sort of expense, I'd like to bring to attention the very top box of this form. It's the personal portion box. Now essentially this is the box where you indicate what percentage of the rental property you use personally and what percentage you use for rental purposes. In this case we used 70% for rent, 30% for personal. So we would go ahead and put 30% here. The first expense on our list we're going to look at is motor vehicle excluding the CCA. Now you can claim automobile expenses for rental properties if you incurred them to transport tools to perform maintenance and necessary repairs on the investment property. Um, you cannot deduct to incur rent unless you have two rental properties. Now in this case, let's say Jack drove over to Memory Lane, he had to fix the sink, fix some hole in the walls, and uh, clean up the beer stains on the rugs. And yes, this property was rented to some university students. Let's just say he incurred $200 in motor vehicle expenses. We can see here that it splits the 30% into the personal portion. This is the portion that is not going to be claimed or deducted. Now for the rental property, they also had a little bit of interest. Now the interest was paid on a loan that Jack and Jill took out to improve the investment property and only under these circumstances, if the loan was taken out to improve the investment property and interest was paid, can it be deducted. So they paid a total of $400 worth of interest. Buying a rental property ain't cheap. You might have, in addition to some of the interest, have some other fees like mortgage fees, brokerage fees, legal fees, other professional fees, but in most cases you can deduct all of them. So let's say they had a total of $1,000 for professional fees and legal fees. So the last expense, and it's, uh, well, it's not really an expense, it's an important consideration with regards to these personal portion percentages. Now, it's not really uncommon for a couple or an individual living in their house to rent out a part of their principal residence to another person. Um, in this case, there's 70% uh, is being rented in hydro bills, telephone lines, and insurance on the house. Let's go ahead and uh, record some of these amounts. We're going to say $1,000 in insurance, 
Again, deductible amount, the 70% for the rentals. We'll say another $1,000 for utilities. That includes hydro, electricity. And we'll also say about $2,500 for uh, property tax. Now, really the beautiful thing about rental income and why the CRA reviews this area so heavily is because rental income can be really offset against anything, any source of income. This includes T4 income, pension income, even passive income like investment income and capital gains. So pretty much any earned income and passive income, rental losses can be deducted against. Um, and this can provide kind of a lucrative and opportunistic uh, feature. So for example, in this case, we're, we're generating a profit of, a, of slightly over uh, $5,000. But what if I were to say, try to incur a loss? What if a hurricane hit the house and we ended up doing $20,000 in repair? Okay, so now we're in the, we're in the red, about $1,600. If we go to a T4, and enter in any sort of employment amount, let's say, well, let's say the exact same amount, 1635. The net effect on the T1 is going to be zero. And if we do go to the T1 general, we can see that his employment income on line 101 is completely offset by his business loss on line 126. And this, of course, leads to a tax liability of zero. So this is kind of an area that the CRA looks at very, very heavily. They realize that it, it's a very, very attractive prospect for taxpayers, and it almost makes it appealing to create a rental loss. But uh, now the CRA can't disallow rental losses, but they do closely examine this issue. So I try to tie the summary point with our last expense, which was the uh, personal portion, and to basically say that any unusually large um, rental portion will usually be heavily reviewed by the CRA. So this concludes our video on rental income and expenses. Um, I have to let everyone know that this is the last week before taxes are due on April 30th, so be sure to get all your slips entered and recorded into their tax into our Taxtron software and uh, submitted before the due date. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.